When Andrew has just met Jesus, he goes and finds his brother Simon, who's to become Simon Peter, and he tells him, we found the Messiah. And what he was saying was the anointed one, that's what Messiah meant, the one who God has given authority to rule. So this is the moment in history, if you like, where God turns up and takes charge. Now, this was the big one. This was, in fact, the most divisive and contentious way in which Jesus was known and is known. On the one hand, it seems to be a no-brainer. This was what they'd all been waiting for. God turns up and takes charge. They were all geared up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to turn up. What could be better? What could be better? This was an occupied country. This was a place where Roman troops, they didn't just have the power to stop and search. Um, they could turn you into a human donkey if they wanted. And they did. So the idea that now at last your king is bigger than their king, that was so exciting. And you can sense, you can, you can understand why huge crowds were gathering around Jesus, why his every move was being watched. Is this the moment when our king at last is bigger than their king? After one miracle in John chapter 6, um, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus knows that they are going to come and try and make him king by force. Well, our king has superpowers. What could be better than that? But Jesus won't consent to be that kind of a king. You know, like Caesar, but bigger, we would say today, like Putin or Biden, but bigger. All that really ends up meaning is that you've put one group on top in the kind of great world game of thrones. How does that serve the world? You really not think of anything better? Jesus was not interested it turned out, in leading one group of sinners to power over the next group. So, for a lot of people, he was a big disappointment. Nothing could be worse, it turned out, than God turning up and taking charge of things. They were in charge, more or less, and he threatened to undermine their position. And before we judge them too harshly, this is a no-brainer, only because we don't think... We don't like to think about the kind of things we enjoy doing when we are in charge. We don't like to think about all the ways in which we'd like to have the world put right, but only if we can be left on our own. Go ahead, you know, deal with world hunger, that would be lovely. You just leave my greed untouched. He's never been that kind of a king. Jesus dies under a notice that says, King of the Jews. For Pilate, that's talking about his failure to topple Caesar. It's tried and failed. For the Jews who protest to Pilate about the wording of the notice, they would say, well, you know, that was never our chosen candidate. You haven't killed the King of the Jews, you just killed a pretender. For both of them, this then is someone who has tried and failed to take charge in God's name. For the disciples who met with Jesus after he had risen from the dead, he is what Thomas says, my Lord and my God. King of kings meant far more than they ever thought it did and not far less. So God does indeed take charge. The question is, how? We'll save that for another time. If you have been, thank you for listening.